Hello, I'm Daniel with First Tech Challenge, Team 9779 Piators. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make a portable charging station. In this video, we'll be telling you what a portable charging station is, the parts list, how to build it, and how to wire it. So basically what it is, is a big battery that can charge both your robot batteries and your phone batteries, and also use a charger that's made to run off batteries so you don't have to plug it into the wall. You also have USB power outlets for your phones. Here is the big battery. Uh, we plug this in, and you can see the chargers light up, and the phone lights up. The chargers will be used to charge your robot batteries, which will sit on top of this lid, which is used for protection for the big battery and for the wires. And now, these are being charged. Okay, now we're getting into the parts. The parts are, or the first part, is a block battery, which we bought from Batteries Plus for $50. Um, in the top right, you can see that it's 12 volts and 12 amp hours, which should give you roughly 6 hours of charge. And you can see in the bottom right, we, had, we made this little cable, which clips onto the battery and converts into Anderson Power Pole. You also need panel mount housings. Uh, you can get these from PowerWorks.com. Um, one is for Anderson Power Poles, and one is for USB. If you go to PowerWorks.com and search panel mount housings, you'll be able to find these very quickly. If you've ever worked with Anderson Power Poles before, you'll probably have some power wire. You'll need a 22 gauge and a 16 gauge wire. We used eight sets of Anderson Power Pole connectors. You can also get this from PowerWorks for about $10. The high-tech X1 multi-charger is the cool part about our portable power station. It can, it's powered by either plugging into a wall outlet or by a, uh, by a battery. It can charge any kind of battery you want, like a lead acid or a nickel metal hydrate battery, which is what robot batteries are used. Um, you can get this at Servo City for $60, and if you say that you're part of FIRST or FTC, you can get discounts. Okay, let's get into the box. Um, start by measuring your battery so you can have something that protects it well because you don't want that to be damaged. Make sure you design your box so that it can fit on whatever cart you use to transport your robot. Any FTC team should have the skills to design and build this box. Here we're drilling holes for the panel mounts. Um, when you do this, find a bit that gives it a nice tight fit. As you can see, the panel mount fits in here nice and tight. We drilled the holes for the panel mounts on the opposite sides of the box. We also staggered the holes so the connectors coming out the back side won't hit each other. Next, hold the box together and make sure everything fits and makes sense, and then you can put it together with screws. Now we're going to start making the wires. Hopefully you're familiar with Anderson power poles because we're going to be making a lot of them. This part goes into the battery, and then the cable splits like a banana, and then it goes to the Anderson power pole panel mount. You can see here that we looped it so that both sets of terminals get power. And if you go to the other side, we have these connectors here. Um, they will connect into this, which is the USB panel mount housing, and as you can see here. Here's the connection to the battery. It goes to a Anderson power pole connection. We connect our Y cable to that connection, then they split off like a banana. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that again. One side plugs into the Anderson power pole panel mount housing, and the other plugs into the USB panel mount housing. Now tuck your wires away, and put the lid on, which will protect your wires and your battery, and be a nice place to put your robot batteries. This is the output side of your charger. Um, it will be used to charge your robot batteries. We attach Anderson power poles to that cable. This side provides power to the charger, and it will be plugged into the block battery. Like so. You can see the charger lights up because it's getting power, and we have another set of outlets which we can plug another charger into.
and on the other side you can see there is the USB outlet which we will be using to charge the phones plug that in and you see we have the power for the phone to attach the charger to the box we used velcro bam and here we're making sure there are no sharp edges or sharp corners and finally to show a little team spirit we spray painted it the classic Piatus blue and here's the finished product the only thing we haven't done is painted the logo on it as you can see it's pretty beautiful and as a review we can see we have a battery with all the wires and connectors the chargers and the phones the lid which will protect your battery and your cables and it will be a place for you to put your robot batteries which will be charged by your chargers And it's all nice and portable because it's sitting on a cart which we use to push the robot around during competition. No AC power needed. Thank you all for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you make one of these, please leave a comment below because we would like to see how yours turned out. Have a great season.